where you look down on the assembly for this round, the 10th out of 12 of the 500cc World Championship of 1984, the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, in, I am delighted to say, near ideal conditions. We had an enormous amount of rain, including a cloudburst yesterday at practice, as a result of which there was no improvement in the fourth practice period, as a result of which the Frenchman Raymond Roche, who actually still has a mathematical, albeit very slim, chance of becoming world champion of 1984, remained in pole position. And Barry Sheen has done extremely well because Sheen is in seventh place on the grid. This is the double world champion of the past. There he is. You just see his helmet behind Ken Fletcher, his mechanic. And number seven, the famous number seven on his shoulder. And Barry Sheen riding a four-cylinder Suzuki, a 1983 works engine without the power valve, for those of you who are technically inclined, in uh, a British Harris frame. And Barry, with all his experience and skill, is in sixth position in the World Championship, seventh on the grid. To Barry's right, and uh, you may see him when we get a full look at the grid, is a quite incredible performer, the little ant Paul Lewis, the Australian. But uh, there, number 33, is Virginio Ferrari, the XMV rider, who is riding the second of the works Yamahas, and he is in sixth position on the grid. There is Paul Lewis, and that's Barry, that's Frank Sheen, Barry's dad, just on the left that you caught a, a glimpse of. And in the glasses, Paul Lewis in eighth position on the Quantel Suzuki four-cylinder, and that is very much not a work machine. Paul Lewis, probably the smallest rider in the race. And this, with Ron Haslam doing one of his spectacular wheelies, is not the start of the race. It is the start of the warm-up lap. And Ron Haslam will be going for victory with a vengeance because uh, Ron needs a victory very badly to retain his place in the all-powerful Honda team. And number four there was Eddie Lawson, the man who is leading the World Championship totally against expectations at the beginning of the season. And uh, look out, too, for number 11, the dynamic, very, very hard, enormously tough Frenchman Raymond Roche, the ex-world endurance champion. And uh, he's in pole position here. So, in pole position, it is the Honda three-cylinder of Raymond Roche, works engine. In second position, it is the works engine but uh, Belgian-framed Honda of Didier de Radigas, the X250cc rider. Then the man who's leading the World Championship seems very likely to win it in the absence of Freddie Spencer, Eddie Lawson. Fourth is Randy Mamola, who, if I had to put money on this race, I would put it on, because he is not only in superb form and has not finished lower than th uh, third this year, but in this race is riding the only four-cylinder Honda. Then, fifth on the grid, it's Britain's Ron Haslam on the works three-cylinder Honda. In sixth position on the grid is Virginio Ferrari, the Italian, on the second of the two works four-cylinder V V4 Yamahas. Seventh, Barry Sheen, and eighth, the amazing Paul Lewis. John, Surtees, you've been studying form a lot and machinery and talking to the riders. Your views? Well, the impressive thing in practice, of course, was uh, the performance of Roche. Quite how he will now go after having had that tremendous accident on Abbey Curve at 140 mile an hour when he didn't even get a scratch, but it must have been a shake-up. And it hasn't been dry on the circuit since for him to get himself back into the groove. On top of that, of course, the development work going on in the Hyundai pit for the three and four cylinders uh, was quite intriguing, and Mamola has opted to use the four, which is uh, a very, very interesting point. There's Paul Lewis, number 41, 24 years old, seven times champion of Australia, came to the UK in 1983, has had the benefit of a lot of guidance from ex-world champion Bill Lomas, who is here to watch him today. 
And uh, then next to Paul Lewis is the man that you have already seen, double world champion Barry Sheen with the famous number seven, who comes from Charlwood. 23 Grand Prix wins in his 16 years' experience. Undoubtedly the most charismatic personality in road racing these days. Superb businessman, very eloquent, a wonderful ambassador for motorcycle sport and has suffered some of the most appalling injuries from all of which he has cheerfully recovered. Then in sixth position, there is Virginio Ferrari, and this is supposed to be his comeback year. Ferrari has not, in fact, done very well. The highest he's ever finished this season is seventh position, and he, like several riders, needs to do well in order to retain his place in his team for next year. Ron Haslam is in fifth position on the grid on the three-cylinder Honda with which he is very happy. The handling is good, the power spread is absolutely ideal for this circuit. But then, after Haslam, next on the grid in fourth position is Randy Mamola, who has got a quite incredible uh, record this year. He missed the two first Grand Prix. And since then, he has finished first, second or third in all seven Grand Prix in which he has ridden. And he is on, I say again, the very powerful four-cylinder Honda, which Randy uh, compares with a Cadillac for ride. And, and that is the man leading the world championship, Eddie Lawson, number four, with 107 points. 20 points ahead of Randy Mamola, and Lawson is in third position on the grid. Next, it is the Belgian Didier de Radigues, and that's the highest he has ever been on a 500cc grid, although he momentarily led the South African Grand Prix at the beginning of this year. And finally, in pole position, the very tough, hard Raymond Roche, who actually broke a rib at Suzuka in Japan last weekend, came back and uh, is shrugging aside the pain. And as John Surtees has told you, he fell off at some 140 miles an hour at Abbey Curve yesterday and has shrugged that off as well, because his incentive and the adrenaline that is pouring through his veins is the chance of winning his first ever Grand Prix, having finished second in South Africa, third in Spain and Yugoslavia and Belgium and second in Holland, to give him his fourth place in the World Championship with 75 points. He's on a three-cylinder works Honda. 28 laps, just a whisker under 82 miles. It's all going to be action. The lap record is held by Kenny Roberts, who is here, very much so. One minute, 28.2, a speed of 119.5 miles an hour, less than 30 seconds to go to what could well be a tremendously interesting and exciting race because Eddie Lawson may opt to ride for points rather than victory. He doesn't have to win, he does need points to build up for the World Championship and to make it two in a row for the Roberts Lawson team. 1983, Roberts, and they're away. And it's Haslam, as usual. Ron Haslam makes a terrific start and goes into the lead with Sheen in second places. British rider, first and second, as they go into the right-hander at Cops. From Cops up into fifth gear for Maggots, building up towards 140 miles an hour. It's Ron Haslam, Rocket Ron, well-named, who is leading the British Grand Prix. And Lawson coming through, there's Lawson now in third position as they go into the right-hander at Beckett's, from Beckett's to Chapel, from Chapel down the Hangar Street at 160, yes, 160 miles an hour, and it's Barry Sheen still in second position, chasing Ron Haslam and losing that third position. And it's De Radiguez who is in second position. So it's Haslam leading Honda, De Radiguez, the Belgian second Honda. Barry Sheen is third on the Suzuki. Fourth is Eddie Lawson on the Yamaha. And Ron Haslam making the most of his clear circuit in front of him is away in the lead, coming up to complete lap one. Well, Ron has made a reputation this year of his early metro starts. The only thing is he has tired during the race. 
I think Di Rodriguez is uh, the real threat here because he did a superb job in the practice series. Into Woodcote and out of it, it's Haslam leading, De Rodriguez, Sheen is third, Mamola is fourth, Lawson is fifth. And you're looking at number 17, De Rodriguez, in on the Honda three-cylinder with its works engine chasing the full works Honda of Ron Haslam, the man who has been the Formula 3 world champion, the Formula 1 world champion, who has won the TT and just about everything else in Britain is possible to win. Sheen is still third. This is magnificent because Barry Sheen was not expecting to do well if the race was dry. Ron McKelney, the British rider, just out of a faster cast, is in ninth position. And Barry last night had to change an engine because in the short period of practice which he did do, uh, it uh, seized a piston. And up into third position now has come Randy Mamola, the American, on the four-cylinder Honda. So it's Honda's first, second and third. It's Barry Sheen, number seven, in fourth position. Behind Barry Sheen, who is fourth, is number four. And then behind it is Rush. Rush is ahead of Lawson. Rush, number 11. So the Hondas are packing the front with Suzuki of Barry Sheen in fourth position and the Yamaha of number four there, Eddie Lawson, on lap two in sixth position. And the one thing that Lawson didn't want was to get Roche in front of him because he said that he could have won, in fact, the Dutch Grand Prix, but Roche being in front frightened the life out of him. And Barry Sheen at his home circuit, Silverstone, in front of his home crowd, the British, is now holding on to Randy Mamola. Barry Sheen has got the 1983 Suzuki Works equipment. The power valve is missing off his engine, which reduces the ultimate performance, but pleases Barry in terms of power characteristics, and he's in fourth position. Just behind Mamola, just ahead of Roche who is just ahead of Lawson, and now on lap three, it's Mamola, De Radigas, the, it's, it's Haslam, sorry, then De Radigas, Mamola is third still. Sheen is fourth, Lawson and Roche are battling for fifth. And in fact, you're seeing a new development there because each of those leading machines have got radial rear, rear tyres on, and Barry's using one for the very first time. Don't forget that Eddie Lawson, provided he is well up at the front, which he is now in fourth position, may decide not to challenge for the lead. He has got a 20 points advantage in the World Championship ahead of Freddie Spencer, who is not riding here, who is nursing a broken collarbone at his home in Shreveport in Louisiana after falling at La Laguna Seca in America and probably ruining the decision ever to ride there. So, it's still Ron Haslam on lap three in this 28-lap race, leading the British Grand Prix. Honda, challenged by De Rodriguez, Honda. Honda third, the four-cylinder Honda of Mamola, and Mamola has now got behind him Eddie Lawson on the Yamaha. Then Roche, number 11, fifth, Barry Sheen is down to sixth. And the Packer 1984 machines are getting past Sheen because, basically, of superior power. And look at the way Mamola is riding in third position, chasing De Rodriguez, who is chasing Haslam. And those are the first and third men in the World Championship. Number three, Mamola, Randy Mamola, with his dramatic, exciting, distinctive riding style, the 24-year-old man from Santa Clara, California, who missed the first two rounds of the World Championship this year because he left Suzuki last year and was not expected to be taking part in World Prix racing at all this year. Then, dramatically, he got a Honda to ride, and he did so well with Spencer having problems, both machine and personal, that Mamola has been given a full works ride and is now on the four-cylinder machine, and that is the bike that Spencer won on in Italy, in France, and in Yugoslavia, the four-cylinder Honda. But at the same time, it hasn't been reckoned as the most competitive one. And so they're trying to bring the development program forward to, by giving this to Mamola. And as De Rodriguez and Haslam fight for the lead, so Mamola and... And now De Rodriguez leads on lap four. The Belgian is through ahead of Ron Haslam. 
And that may well be because of this very special frame that he has had built, which seems to give superior handling characteristics, because Ron Haslam is no man to hang about. But De Radigas, number 17, the 25-year-old Bruxellois, is in the lead for the second time in the Grand Prix. The first time was in South Africa at the beginning of the season in conditions were, which were as different from this as they possibly could be because it was pouring with rain. And Di Rodriguez is in fact a de development from the 250 class of racing. And there he is, 17, 9, has the second, 3, Navarro third, Hoffman's first, second and third. Lawson, number four, in fourth position because he has got ahead of Mamola now. No, ahead of Roche. There they are, Mamola number three, third. Lawson number four, fourth. Roche number 11, fifth. And the speed is showing very, very equal between them at the moment. The Yamaha was reckoned to have slightly the top edge. British riders, Alan Irwin, the, the Irishman, and uh, Roger Burnett, both out of the race in the very early stages. back in front. De Radige is second. Right up with him now. Number three there, third. Mamola. Watch the way they get right off the machines to keep the machine as upright as possible and as much tyre area on the ground as possible. And they know they've gone as far as they can when their knee is dragging on the ground and that's why they have special padding on the knee. And when they feel that rubbing on the ground, it's time to lift the bike a bit. Haslam. From a racing family, Ron Haslam. His brother raced, his brother Terry races sidecars. And now Mamola is starting to wear down the Belgian de Radigue as Haslam goes into the right-hander at Stowe. And that's a 90 mile an hour then. Up to fifth gear and 140 miles an hour. Down to third gear and 90 for Club Corner. From Club Corner up to the fastest part of the course. Into fourth gear here. To fifth gear here. Round Abbey Curve, which is where Roche fell off last yesterday. Into sixth gear. And as they go underneath the bridge, they are doing 160 miles an hour. Down to fifth to take Woodcote at 120. And at the end of this, lap six, it is Haslam, De Renige, Navala, Lawson. And behind Lawson, Raymond Rush, and then Barry Sheen, still hanging on there and right up with them. There he is in sixth position. There have been a lot of knockers who have said that Barry Sheen's racing days are over how wrong they are all barry has ever needed is the right equipment he does not lack the racing will and there's never been any doubt about the fact that he's got the racing ability and he's proving it right here 33 year old barry sheen right up with them in sixth position in fifth position it is roche in fourth position it is lawson third is mamela second is de Radige. and the leader is ron haslam from langley mill Mamola goes through, he's up to second, he has worn down De Radige, he is up to second. Well, they are spoiling each other because at these sort of speeds, what you do find is there's a lot of disturbance and today we will have a reasonable amount of wind. And so the line through the corner is all important for a maximum lap speed and none of these except the leader can do it. And Haslam is actually building up in the terms of this race a bit of a cushion. He must be all of half a second in the lead. That's a lot of... <laughs> in the 1984 500 British Grand Prix. Here he comes towards us now. Watch the way they get right down and then out of the fairing into the 120 mile an hour Woodcote Bend to complete lap seven. And the gap between Haslam in the lead and Sheen in sixth place is 1.4 seconds. Lawson is now right up alongside De Redige and going up into third position. Roche is in there too. And you may have seen just behind that leading bunch, in fact, is uh, Mick Grant on the other Suzuki. The veteran, 40-year-old Mick Grant, watch for him, the multiple TT winner. And Grant is number 57. There he is. That's a terrific performance by Mick Grant. So there are the leaders again. And that is Barry Sheen in the distinctive yellow-wheeled Suzuki 
first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, down the hangar straight, out of the race has gone the Swiss rider Sergio Pellandini, no problem that I know of except machine, and out of the right-hander, in the lead for the first time, Randy Mamola. And now Lawson has seen that he's got to do something about it because Mamola is the one man in this race that can seriously challenge Eddie Lawson for the World Championship. Lawson is now in third position on the V4 Yamaha. There he is, the quiet Californian, right with Ron Haslam, almost rubbing wheels. And you notice how... He's actually been coming up on the inside of the corners and, in fact, trying to sort of close off the possibility of someone diving through and perhaps endangering him. Te Lawson's riding a very heady race. Technical point. Most of the riders, the Honda riders, are on Michelin tyres. Lawson and Ferrari are on Dunlop cross-ply tyres. And the Yamaha's power characteristics and the Dunlop tyres are ideally suited to this Silverstone circuit. Kenny Roberts won on the Yamaha last year. Eddie Lawson finished in fourth position last year and he's just having his first full season of Grand Prix racing and now the race is, as expected, between Randy Mamola, number three, the leader, Eddie Lawson, the World Championship leader, number four, in second place on lap nine in this 28-lap race. And there's virtually nothing to do uh, between the two relative to maximum speeds. And you see the entry into Stowe Corner there. Both machines are extremely stable and not using all of those just yet. So I think they've still got a little in hand. Ron Haslam still there in third position. De Radige is still in fourth position. Behind De Radige is Raymond Roche, number 11, the Frenchman on the Honda. Then. And there is Rush riding out of the race. Zut! That's it. I've had enough. Furious. Chuck it away. What use is it anymore? Rush has seen his World Championship chances and his chance of winning the British Grand Prix disappear in a puff of something or other. And he's stumping his way angrily back to the pits, nearly tripping up in the process. Not a happy day. In pain with his rib and Lawson leads. Well, is this it, John? Well, he's certainly riding very well indeed. And, of course, although he doesn't have to win, there's a question of pride. And everybody said, well, you played second fiddle to Roberts and now you had the Spencer situation. So he really, for his own pride, would like to win. Yes, Eddie Lawson said yesterday, and this was not just mere flattery, he is a very sincere man. For him, Silverstone is the finest circuit in the world and more than any other British Grand Prix, more than any other Grand Prix he wants to win in Britain, but I wonder if he's going to do so, because Randy fights back. Randy Mamola is back. And was actually able to pull out of the slipstream and pass coming down to Woodcote. So if it stays that way, that uh, gives him a good chance for the final. Behind this batch, there is a very significant development. Wayne Gardner, number 18, the very doughty Australian rider, is in sixth position with the disappearance. There he is, you see him in the background. Number 18, Wayne Gardner, the man who is leading the Formula One British Championship. There he is, the 25-year-old man from Wollongong in Australia, in sixth position. And it's nice to see Ferrari coming up there and doing such a good performance because he also needs it very badly indeed. Virginio Ferrari, the Italian on the Yamaha, is in seventh position. Eddie Lawson leads the race again. And Gary Lingham, the English rider, is out of the British Grand Prix. Here is sixth place, Wayne Gardner. He's got a works engine in his Honda. And he, Wayne Gardner, is eighth equal in the World Championship having finished his best race fourth in Italy. The difference there also is that uh, the works ones are on Michelin tyres and the English ones of Wayne Gardner are on Dunlop. Now, the Yamaha seems to have as much power as we watch sixth place man 18, Wayne Gardner. The Yamaha of number four, the race leader, Eddie Lawson, seems to have as much power as the very powerful four-cylinder Honda of Mamola, and the handling characteristics of both machines seem to be virtually identical. It's down to the riders, and now, on lap 11 out of 24, it's Mamola back in the lead. 
The man from Santa Clara leads. The man from Uplands in California, Mamola, leads. Yet yeah, Honda, you can see now, as the bike went away from us, the four exhaust pipes, two on each side, sticking out at the back of the tail of the... the very sharply defined tail of the Honda. Out of Woodcote, it's Mamola. It is Lawson, and between Mamola in the lead and... Haslam, who is in third position, number nine, there is, well, it's visual, it's less than a second. Magnificent racing, and Ron Haslam has scratched his way back up to the front again. The Yamaha machine, of course, has been developed over these past two years and is now a superb, complete machine, both in handling and performance. And De Radige is right back up there. He certainly mustn't be disregarded because... He did a superb performance last year here and has adapted to 500s brilliantly. And still in fifth position is Barry Sheen. The race order. Mamola leads on the Honda. Lawson is second on the Yamaha. Haslam is third on the Honda. Fourth is De Radige on the Honda. Fifth is Barry Sheen. And sixth is Honda. So there are four Hondas, a Yamaha and a Suzuki in the first six. And two British riders in the first six as Lawson goes, dives in very tight, but the door is firmly, but fairly shut in his face by Randy Mamola as they go round the left-hander at Abbey Curve, the fastest corner on the circuit, now doing 160 up to Woodcote. Well, he's also taken that tighter line to stop someone else slipping through the inside. It's a safety precaution as well. For his maximum speed, he'd probably be out on the line following Mamola through. Somebody off at Stowe, we can't identify it. Now, let's have a look closely at him and see. It's Becceroni, it's Becceroni, the Italian rider, and uh, he's, he's obviously OK from the way he's walking, albeit sadly in. And as ever, the marshals are insisting that he has medical attention, if nothing more than a check before he goes away any further. There's the doctor checking that he is OK. Becceroni was in eighth position. So that's tough on him, because he might well have finished in the points. Now we are on lap 13, coming up to the half-distance lap. The battle at the front rages. Mamola. Lawson. Haslam. Stowe corner, this is, De Radige, fourth. Now to club. Lawson takes the lead. Three Hondas, one Yamaha. Up to Abbey. Lawson, Mamola, Haslam, De Radige. Up to the bridge at 160 miles an hour. Down into fifth to take Woodcote. You saw there how he took, in fact, the wider line when he had the clear road in front. Magnificently smooth, effortless style Eddie Lawson has. He's been racing for 18 of his 26 years from when he was a schoolboy. First in the Daytona 250, twice Superbike champion of America. Last season, his first in International World Championship 500cc racing outside America. And he celebrated that by finishing very well up in the championship last year. In fact, that was the first time he'd ever ridden a Grand Prix 500 motorcycle last year, so it's a tremendous performance. And Eddie Lawson there has scored in every round of the World Championship this year. He won in South Africa, in Spain, in Austria. Second in Italy, Germany, France. He's lost the lead to Randy Mamola, but he's lost it before and regained it. He'll do so again. Ron Haslam, though, is still there, and he could just be riding a canny race as they close up on Paolo Ferretti, the Italian rider, the man from Lugo on a private Honda. That's number 53, who's just about to be engulfed by Lawson, Haslam, Mamola and De Radige. 
In seventh position, it's Virginio Ferrari. Eighth is the leading purely private rider, Paul Lewis. Ninth is Britain's Rob McKelney, riding the new Heron Suzuki with the honeycomb frame, only out of plaster about four days. And in tenth position is the Frenchman, Lelia, who is Rodriguez's teammate. Rodriguez's uh, teammate, my apologies. At 15... absolute trust each of these riders has got again in the others and they have to have to ride wheel to wheel elbow to elbow fairing to fairing at speeds like this they've got the hazard now of coming up and take and uh, lapping tail enders as they go past number 62 there christian burkey the swiss rider on the suzuki but they do that without trouble because there's plenty of room at silverstone with its wide track to get past and Lawson leads into Stowe. No doubt be much more relaxed now that Roche is out of the way because the pair of those have had a few fair in banging sessions in previous races. Yes, Raymond Roche is not above when the circumstances call for it, removing his foot from the footrest and uh, shoving the other bloke. And uh, it's happened at least once on the Grand Prix circuits this year. And it was fortunate that there wasn't a pretty nasty accident as a result of it. But Ross is out of the race. Lawson now... ...has taken advantage yes. of that little passing operation and has, in fact, taken a small lead over Mamola. It's a lead that you can hardly time as they go into Woodcote with Mamola in second place, Haslam third, De Ridige in fourth position. It's just about uh, four... Four tenths of a second as they went into Woodcote, but I've no doubt that Mamela will close it. Eddie Lawson on his 16th lap, then eight laps to go now. They're coming up to lap yet more, who are midfield men now. Alan Irwin is one of them, who seems to have rejoined the race, having ridden out of it earlier on. And in Absolutely superb conditions. There's a big crowd, not the biggest I've ever seen at Silverstone for this event, but a big one nevertheless. And they're seeing magnificent racing as now Mamala having, I, I suspect, John, having had a bit of a rest uh, in his terms, has now decided to charge again and is right up with Lawson ahead of Haslam, third and De Ridige, fourth and, a, and less than two seconds between the first and fourth. But he's going to try and keep the pressure on Lawson because, of course, it is Honda's only hope that Lawson will make a mistake. And so I think that there's no point in uh, Mamola just disappearing, despite the fact that I don't think that he could, in fact, do so. But he just has to harass uh, Lawson at this point. If Lawson wins this race, he'll get 15 World Championship points to add to the 107 that he already has to give him 122. And... Uh, Mamola would get 12, which would give him 93. And with only two races to go, a possible 30 points for the top two places, it would mean that Eddie Lawson was virtually home and dry as world champion for the first time in his career. I think Mamola is trying very hard. You notice how he's using all the road on the way out. He's over the sort of concrete paving on the outside, whereas Lawson is still staying just inside the white line. Yeah, it's terribly, terribly difficult, if not impossible, to communicate just what super men these are. These two-wheel projectiles, which develop well over 120 miles an hour, are here right over on the corners. One wrong pressure on the twist grip and you can lose it altogether. And now Wayne Gardner, sixth and Ferrari seventh, are up with Barry Sheen battling for fifth position. So, the battle for the lead continues, and there's a great scrap developing for fifth place. There are the first two. There are Haslam and De Rodrigue. Now we should see three riders very closely together. These are two tail-enders. And there they are, amongst that lot, is number seven, Barry Sheen, number 18, Wayne Gardner, number 33, Virginia Ferrari. There they are. There are there's 33, Virginia Ferrari, the second of the two Yamaha Works riders, with Wayne Gardner, number 18, and they've both passed Barry Sheen. So that means to say that Wayne Gardner is now fifth, Ferrari is now sixth, 
and Sheen is now down at number seven with his number seven on his machine. And that with them riding round there and about to be lapped is Mila Pajic, the Dutch rider of the Suzuki. And Ferrari's right in there as well because he's just gone by. Twenty-four lap race. This is lap eighteen. Here are the leaders, and it does seem to me that if you take the race as a whole, corner by corner, lap by lap, that Eddie Lawson is not in the ascendancy. He is now very firmly established in a lead, which is going to be very, very difficult even for Randy Mamola to displace him from. And if Lawson wins, it will be to add to his victories from South Africa, Spain and Austria. This very quiet man who tends to be overlooked in consideration about who are the best riders, even though he's leading the World Championship because he has a very quiet and retiring nature, an extremely nice, eloquent, deep-thinking man, and he comes out of Woodcote now to complete lap 18, and the gap between Lawson, the leader, and Mamola in second place is, well, just under half a second, and it's less than that now. It's a matter of machine's lengths. So Mamola's not giving up. Short, stocky, very strong. Randy, freckle-faced, gingerhead Mamola is hanging on. And Roger Marshall is in 11th place, the British champion, four times British champion on his Honda, battling it out with Bert van Dulman, the Dutch rider. And the race order on this, the 19th lap, is you are looking at the leader, Eddie Lawson, chased by Randy Mamola. Third is Didier de Rodriguez as Mamola challenges for the lead and takes it. He was just Fourth able to pull out. Haslam. Fifth is Gardner. Sixth is Ferrari. Seventh is Sheep. Yes, that time he was just able to pull out of the slipstream and get through. No one. Oh, something's come off him. That's, I fear, is one of the many hairs that run about at Silverstone. They've been flushed out of the fields by I don't know what, but there have been several of them running about in the practice period, and I fear that that was one failing to make it across the course. I just hope he hasn't done any damage to the lower petrol tank, because the petrol tank on the four-cylinder Honda there is actually slung underneath the engine. Uh, yes. Did you reckon it was... Uh, Mamola who hit it, to John. Well, I just think it bounced between the pair of them. Yes. Well, that's a very good point, incidentally, because with Lawson back in the lead, as we look at Mamola's machine, it's all upside down, as it were, because what seems like a petrol tank underneath the rider's chest is, in fact, a cover for the exhaust pipes, which go over the top of the engine, and the petrol, in order to keep the weight as much as possible down and the centre of, gra of gravity as low as possible, is actually underneath the engine. You're looking at the petrol tank now, that white bit. Just below the Honda. Bottom of the fairing, yes. And uh, that, that uh, fairing over the exhaust pipes gets very hot. If you look just over the rider's hands of the four-cylinder Honda, the fairing, you will see uh, there is an NACA duct as Mamola retakes the lead from Lawson. That duct leads into a black pipe, which leads into an airspace between the top of the exhaust pipes and the fairing in order to keep the temperature down as much as possible. And Mamola surges between two riders, one of whom was Simon Buckmaster. And you are now seeing an absolutely magnificent scrap. Number four, Eddie Lawson, world champion designate, and Randy Mamola, the one of the, the only man who can prevent him at the, this meeting from getting that championship. And I think that, in fact, Lawson has decided a really race because you notice he got wide on that corner, got into the loose stuff, got into a little trouble, but still went ahead and took the inside place and the lead again. And Rob McKelvey, recovering from his French Grand Prix leg injury on the new. Monocoque Heron Suzuki is in eighth position. Lawson leads, Mamola second, De Radige third, Haslam fourth, Gardner fifth, Ferrari sixth, Sheen seventh, and the Heron Suzuki of Rob McKelney is in eighth place. Randy Mamola has put up the fastest lap, 129.72, one and a half seconds outside Kenny Roberts' lap record, and Mamola's speed, 117.4 miles an hour. There he is. 
And in fact, that machine and the Heron both have another do new development in this race. They have the carbon fiber rear brake discs. Breathtaking stuff, lap 21. The big, big, big crowd here is sitting, watching an epic struggle for a win. I was talking to Mamola before the race, and he said the big advantage of the radial tyre was that it performed the same on the last lap as the first lap. We just have to see if that's the case, because uh, you do get a deterioration in normal cross-ply, which is like on the Yamaha here. And it's right, it's cross-ply tyres, as far as we know, and I say that cautiously, that Lawson has, because we know that the Dunlop concern has been experimenting with different types of tyre construction and compound, and it's a bit of a secret what Lawson's actually got on, although I suspect it's crossed by. And look at the way that the tyres there of Mamola's four-cylinder Honda with it wiggling a bit on the exit to Cops, although Mamola, as I said earlier on, likens the handling of the four-cylinder Honda to a Cadillac, and he's very, very happy with it indeed. Preferred the four to the three-cylinder Honda, not only because of its superior power, but because of its handling. The only problem being that the power characteristics are not always what the rider would ideally like, but knowing Honda, I'm sure that iron that out in development. Well, that needs to be developed in racing, and that's why it's out there now. It doesn't have necessarily that much more power, but they've just got to change the power curve slightly to suit all circuits. But Silverstone is a power circuit where they can get away with purely top end. Trevor Nation, number 65 on the Suzuki, a reserve I'm glad to say has got in after some fine British rides this year, is being lapped by Randy Mamola and shortly by Eddie Lawson. Is Mamola going to be able to take advantage of that and pull out a bit of a lead over Lawson, who has yet to pass Nation and now does so? Coming through to complete now the 22nd lap in this 28-lap race. And the gap between Mamola and Lawson is as it was before, just over half a second, a few machines linked into Cop's corner. Still in third position, it is De Radige. Right behind him is Ron Haslam, as close to De Radige in third position as Lawson is to Mamola in the lead. In fifth position, it is Ferrari on the second Yamaha. So both Yamahas are in the first five places. Sixth, a brilliant ride, Wayne Gardner. In spite of tyre troubles in practice, which upset the handling characteristics of his Honda, seventh is Barry Sheen, eighth is Rob McKelvin. We have, to, we have to remember, though, that uh, actually Lewis had to qualify on the tyres taken off of Wayne Gardner's bike. Yes, well, Wayne seems to have come through in the end, and now Lewis is fighting back. He was in ninth position, and further down the field, Paul Lewis on the Quantel Suzuki is side by side with Rob McKelvey. So we've got battles all down the field, but this is the one that is going to decide the winner. Two Americans, and uh, in a week when the Americans are dominating the Olympics, it is more than interesting to record that the top road racers are Americans, because the top three in the World Championship are all American. Eddie Lawson, who is in second place in this race, Freddie Spencer, who is second in the World Championship, not here today, and the race leader here, number three, Randy Mamola, all American, and showing the way to the European and other world riders. We are now on lap 24, and Ron Haslam is in third position. Ron Haslam has taken De Radige, you'll see shortly, the white helmet and the black leathers of Ron Haslam. There they go. That's Haslam on the three-cylinder Honda in front of De Radige, and he needs to stay there because Honda have got a wealth of talent to choose from for their factory team in 1985. And Raymond Roche won't have done himself very much good from that point of view by crashing out of the British Grand Prix. Mamala leads. Coming up to club corner behind Lorenzo Giselli, the Italian on the Suzuki. Lawson second, lap 24. 
club corner is a 90 mile an hour bend build up to fourth gear to fifth gear to abbey which they're at now then to sixth 160 miles an hour under the bridge into woodcote to complete lap 24 which means to say that there are then four laps to go including the one they've just started and in fact it's obvious now that mamola has made the right choice of machine because they've dropped the three cylinder machines considerably way behind and he's able to hold the yamaha on maximum speed and if Big, big gap between Eddie Lawson in second place, the new third place man, Ron Haslam, the new fourth place man having been displaced by Haslam, Didier de Radigue. And there is the battle for third position between Englishman Haslam from Langley Mill, Belgian Didier de Radigue from Brussels in Belgium, and it's as close a battle for third as it is for first. Sheen is in sixth position now, having got past Wayne Gardner. The race order being Mamola, Lawson, Haslam is third, Deredige is fourth, fifth is Ferrari, sixth is Sheen, seventh is Gardner, and eighth and ninth a battle between Rob McKelney and Paul Lewis, both on Suzuki's. Mamola. Who was one of the quietest and most withdrawn men in uh, Grand Prix racing when he first started? Not surprising because he was very young and experienced, inexperienced. Since then, as his confidence in world travel and Europe and race leadership has built up, he has become an extremely interesting and communicative man to talk to. Yes, well, of course, he wasn't going to start this year's uh, Grand Prix race and he missed the first two events. But here I think he's actually building up just a little cushion to give him a very secure position. Uh, he's certainly keeping the pressure on, and I'm not certain that Lawson isn't in some doubts as to quite whether to go the 101% necessary to pass him. Now, behind, although we, we're staying with this terrific scrap for the lead as they pass David Griffith on the Suzuki number 15, Behind the seventh place man, Wayne Gardner, who's got Barry Sheen sixth ahead of him, there's now a four man scrap for eighth place between Paul Lewis, and that is Paul Lewis's bike. Paul Lewis has overdone it and dropped it. So that means that McKelney, Roger Marshall, and Katayama are battling for eighth position. That, I regret to say, does not look good because the straw bales are being put round Paul Lewis. And round now on the 26th lap with two to go at the end of it, Mamola, and he, had, he nearly had the back step away from him then, but such are the young American's reflexes, and he's really riding at about 11 tenths, John, if that were possible. That's for sure, but of course his dirt track experience really stands him in good stead there. He's able to sort of take those slides, and this is where the Americans score. Completing now lap 26. Mamola, and he's building up definitely a lead now because it's one and a half seconds lead over Eddie Lawson. That little wiggle in the machine shows that he's right on the ragged edge. And of course, you remember, he doesn't really know this machine. It's his first race with it. So uh, Lawson may be deciding to play it safe for second. Just look at the way Mamola is going. He has taken Franco Uncini, or his. his uh, the ex-world champion, the Italian who was hit by Wayne Gardner in last year's Dutch Grand Prix, Dutch TT, and Mamola now is on his last lap but one. He won here in 1980, and it looks as though he's going to win again. And he got by a, at a vital point there because now he's got a cushion of those uh, people who were, were lapping. And he's been able to pull out a few more yards. Yes. <laughs> Goodness, he's fighting that machine. And Lawson now is about to take Mick Grant, the oldest rider, 40-year-old Mick Grant, the oldest rider, double Grand Prix winner and multiple TT winner. And uh, Lawson still hasn't got past the British vet veteran. There is Mick Grant, number 57. Lawson leans the Yamaha over on absolutely full whack and gets past Mick there. But I've little doubt that that's given Randy Mamola the opportunity marginally to increase his lead as he comes into Woodcote now to start his last lap. And the gap between Mamola and Lawson is two seconds now. 
Last lap, let's go round with the potential victor and second place man. There is the man who's going to be second, unless something happens to the leader, Randy Mamola, in the last two and a half miles of the race, because with Lawson coming up to Maggots, then down into Beckett's, here is the race leader, 24-year-old Californian Randy Mamola, who won here in 1980, who has finished second in Spain, one in Holland, third in both Austria, Germany and France, second in Belgium, third in the World Championship, to add 15 points to the 81 that he already has. Into Stowe, there is no way, unless Mamola is blocked by these riders in front of him, that Lawson will catch him. And now, De 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 Rodigue is missing, Ferrari is up to fourth, Sheen is up into fifth, Wayne Gardner is back into sixth position. And Mamola's going through, where is Lawson? There he is. And number 53, Paolo Ferretti, has been lapped for the second time. And Randy Mamola, as he passes the tail-enders, is under the bridge, is up to Woodcote, is into the last corner, and I'm glad to say that Paul Lewis is perfectly OK. And Randy Mamola gives a sign of victory as he wins the 1984 British Grand Prix from Eddie Lawson on the Yamaha in second position. And, uh, yet, yeah, Randy has won a magnificent victory. The World Championship has yet to be decided. A superb ride.